Autonomous vehicles are in the news and the discussion of when will they be hitting the roads of America. Well, I'm here in Clark County right now and autonomous vehicles are happening right now in this field in the form of a grain cart. Charlie Troxell with Precision Ag Services running the combine behind me has a grain cart set up running autonomously. So Charlie, tell me you know, with the autonomous system, kind of walk me through the, the nuts and bolts of it from the start. Okay, so from, from the user standpoint, the first thing that we do is Right now, as part of an iPad, we're using a web-based browser. It's not an app, but it's a username, password, login, and we set a boundary for a perimeter of this said field. Both the combine and tractor have to be tied in with RTK. Um, as we start painting coverage within the boundary, that is what tells the grain cart tractor not where it can and can't go. Um, once we've opened the app and we have we have picked our combine, our head make, and what tractor we're going to use, we basically have a couple different functions. We have a, a staging area where we can unload at. So any of the, if you're going to park trucks at a certain part of the field, um, this little U is basically the unload uh, uh, staging area. Um, the other two pieces, you have an S, which is a staging area, and M for a midpoint. So a staging area is basically if I want that tractor out somewhere in the field before I get close to it, we can, we can send it there and it will just sit and stop. Um, and then once, once we are at the point where we want to try to unload, the final function is a what they call a sync button. And based off of our travel, um, with the combine, that's what predetermines that sync route for the tractor. Once the tractor gets within a certain proximity of the combine, the combine basically takes over. Um, every morning or, or once every couple of days, we have to put the unload auger out over the grain cart and tell, basically hit a button and say, this is how far away this grain cart has to be when it finally connects with the combine. And then after that, it matches whatever the speed of the combine is, is what that grain cart is going to uh, to mimic. All right, let's shell some corn and let's see this thing in action. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is we will go ahead and stage that tractor from where it sits, um, somewhere midway up the field here. And so basically I have to arm the system and once I get a green check mark on the tractor, which is probably hard to see, this basically opens up and shows me everything that the tractor is doing. We can hit a stage button. And we can command that tractor. If you look out there, there's nobody, nobody in that tractor. And it's basically coming to a predefined point out in the field. So can you control how fast it actually travels across the field? Yes, yes. Um, I can I can take it all the way down from, I believe, one or two mile an hour clear up to, I believe, 12 is the, the new parameter for its field speed. So I can speed it up. Right now it's supposed to be going eight mile an hour. Right now, it is not. I have not told it to do anything in regards to where the combine is yet. I'm just trying to get it close enough so that when we do get needing to be dumped, that it doesn't have to travel clear from the other side of the farm to get there. So, from a safety standpoint, we're shelling right next to a school. I'm assuming there's there's radar on the tractor so that if it sees something that it doesn't recognize, that it will stop. It will stop, and it is very, very sensitive. Um, it will pick up a, a human element, a, uh, I guess a material object, or it is designed to stay so many feet away from a given boundary. Um, once we get close to it with the combine, it will probably recognize the combine, and it's something that I can see on my screen. Um, it has cameras, sensors, uh, fail safe, uh, I guess emergency shut off buttons, one that I have in the combine and then one that's right now in the tractor. Uh, the, the semi 
driver that would hop in that tractor theoretically could carry that with him um, in the event that if something was going off course, if, if we set a staging point right on top of a semi, in theory it should never hit the semi because it will the radar will recognize the semi before it gets to its destination. So I had my tripod set up in the field and you said it would recognize that tripod and yes. not and not go over that. Yes. I mean we had one of our dogs right in front of the the cart sitting still and it, it flipped popped up on the screen that there was an object that it detected. So I had a three-quarter buzzer go off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sink that tractor to come and meet me as quickly as it can. So what will happen is if you're going to pay attention to this screen, we can focus in on the combine, the tractor, we can look at live camera feed to see what the grain cart is seeing as it's coming up. Um, kind of a neat feature. We'll close the feed while it's sinking. So if you look in the mirror, at 8 mile an hour, that tractor is trying to get to a point about 50 yards in front of me. to set that sinking point way ahead of the combine so that the tractor has enough time to go offline, get engaged with the set point that we, that we determine on the combine, and then at this point, what, what we have now is I have total control of that grain cart. It will match me speed for speed. If I slow down, it will, with a little bit of a delay, it will slow down as well. But its goal is to try to hit that in between that first and second tarp valve. If you zoom over here, Bart, this is basically the the joystick or the control buttons that I have. If I want to shove the tractor forward, I push it forward and it'll move forward in one foot increments. If I need it to come closer to me, I can shove it over a foot or push it away from me. Um, and then what all we really have to do at the end is basically either command it to stop or it will detect that it's coming close to the physical boundary that we set and it will shut itself off. So this is your first season with this and this is actually a, a beta <laughs> yes. system. So who, who manufactures this system? The, the company name is, is called Smart Ag, based out of Ames, Iowa. Uh, the, the physical name that they've given this said product is called Auto Cart. <laughs> and uh, being involved with Precision Agri Services and kind of the tech world for this area, uh, we decided to uh, uh, make the commitment to become a, a dealer for them. Um, so one of the beauties of uh, being an employee uh, is we get to sometimes test some of the, be part of the beta. Um, and it's been, a, it's been an interesting uh, system to watch. So you can leave it sit here at the end of the field. I can leave or it. Or you can bring it up and stage it yes. two thirds of the way down this 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 pass if you want. Correct? Yes sir. Yes. And that is kind of what we're gonna try to do right now is basically force that thing to basically make a loop around behind me, hit a midpoint here kind of behind the combine and then hopefully end up somewhere out here in this open spot. So who do you see this being a real application for? I see it being applicable for anybody that has a hard time finding seasonal help. Um, you know, the problem we run into right now on a daily basis is, you know, I, I can't justify on 1,800 acres bringing somebody on full time when I really kind of need them in the fall. Um, and I think a lot of growers are like that. A lot of our clients 
are faced with that, just uh, the labor force that's out there today, um, you know, isn't, uh, I, I just don't think it's there. Um, you know, we've, we've used this in multiple applications. Obviously, you want to see it dump on the go, which is, it's, which is one, of a, one of its features. But we kind of saw it being as, as important to just be able to move the green part around uh, maybe from one end of the field to the next, just to make it a little closer to the combine. And it, uh, you know, they they will continue to expand the the tractor portfolio that it fits. Um, right now, it's limited to a, a John Deere current R series, eight R series wheeled machine, um, which is probably one of the most popular tractors out there. Um, so what, what modifications had to be done to that tractor to set it up for this smart system? We basically had to put a smart computer in it. Um, we tie into the Deere GPS. Um, the tractor has to have the IVT transmission, just basically so we can set, set parameters. Right now, if you got in the tractor, the throttle would be at full throttle, but it would be in that um, eco mode or uh, auto mode where it'd be at a low idle even though the throttle was all the way down that way when we command it that it basically can go anywhere it needs to go and have enough have enough rpms to do it um, so right you know moving forward there will be capabilities in the case uh, tractor series that have their version of the, the IVT transmission so now it, it came over to you and then it, it syncs with the combine once it kind of sees you, correct? Yes, it, it has to get within a certain distance and then there's some Wi-Fi built into some of the brains that are installed on the combine that basically, once it communicates with the tractor, it's, it is, it's basically forcing it to come over and hit this spot that it's dumping right now because we told it that's where I want the dumping to start. Um, and then, like I said, now that I have total control over it, I can move it a little closer to me. I can move it forward or backwards just with a, with a button press. Um, so once the cart's full, you send it to a staging point, but you have to unload it into the semi. Yes, yes. Um, but like in my particular case, if I, if I had a truck driver out here today that did not want to get in a tractor, if I could at least get the tractor close to where he was at, and I brought the combine over with me, I could unload both of them um, essentially at the same time without having to, to walk clear across the field. So it's, when do you see this system being available kind of out on, out on the market? I believe the SmartAg's ultimate goal is to, uh, my impression is, is to have something for commercial release by, by next season. Um, Tim Norris, who is, I, I guess, our regional manager for Smart Ag that would cover us at Precision AgriService as an Ag Infotech, the other dealer for this system. Um, he says that this has been in three years worth of, of testing. Um, we've worked out a lot of bugs this year, um, and I... I would like to, I, I get the impression that they think it will be ready to go to market by early 2020. And ballpark figure, what's what's this system going to cost? Since people asked the Farm Science Review, and since nobody can hold hold me true to this number, the, the original number that was floating around was right around 50000 Um and, and when, you know, some of the first people heard that number, uh, there were some gasps, some shock of how expensive it was. But when you look at, you know, maybe the first year it being a big expense for your operation, uh, by that second year, if you had to pay an employee, um, maybe just in order to keep somebody in a grain cart, uh, I think by the second year, you'd be money ahead to have something like this system. We've, we've proven that this uh, that this has an application for you know probably any size operation and probably the the, the mid-sized farmer which I feel we fall into is kind of it may be that perfect fit um, 
you know, I, as they expand on it, what what Smart Ag is going to allow autonomy to do on the farm for us, um, you know, there may be other applications down the road as far as tillage, you know, maybe planting, um, and I think some of that is here. Uh, it's just not been as widely adapted, but there again, this is still cutting edge technology. Charlie, I appreciate you inviting me into the cab. It's pretty impressive that we've got some high tech happening in the cornfield here in Clark County, Ohio. Thanks, Gordon.